everyone. My name is Tracy Brisson, and I'm the founder of the Opportunities Project, a uh, small company in the education industry that uh, performs recruiting and coaching services. And I'm here today to talk about scale, and particularly the dilemma of scale that many of us face. For many people in the audience, I've been, I came last year, and I, I've been here the last few days listening to many of the presentations. I know we have many teachers in the audience and principals and people who might not think about scale as much because you work with your students, your specific students, and you do specific duties, and you think about, and you're able to measure your impact. Um, you know what you do is good and you're satisfied by it. But when we start to think about our country and our state and our city and the problems that we face in education, scale is something collectively that we all must think about. Consider this stat about the city that's hosting us today. Only 20% of our high school graduates in New York City are college ready. So again, scale is something that we all need to think about. And I'm biased. I think about scale in a different way. I'm going to reintroduce myself now. My name is Tracy Brisson, and I am a recovering educrat. Um, before starting my company, I worked in public education for 13 years for some big institutions and big brands, Teach for America Corps member, Princeton Review, three chance, served under three chancellors at the New York City Public Schools, and was the director of teacher recruitment for all New York City Public Schools, all 1,600 of them. So I often think big when it comes to scale. But a few years ago, I got very disenchanted by the business of education reform and actually scaled down professionally and personally. I gave up my stuffy business suits, I wear flowers in my hair, I moved to Savannah, Georgia, as Jeff said, I go on my porch, I drink red wine, I write, I tweet, and I launched my little company that could. And one of the reasons, one of the things that I realized why I could is because I understood scale. One of my favorite things about my journey as an entrepreneur the last two years is getting to know more educational communities, online, in person, here, nationally. Communities that I feel are kind of my tribe and that I never would have known when I was in an institution. Partly because when you know, we're in the district office or we're in a government agency, we, we think we're the center of the world. We do. And you, you know that, so you don't invite people like me to your events. So I'm kind of excited that I got to step outside and experience it. It's been a love affair and infatuation for me. I love working and talking with people who aren't obsessed with governance and policy and assessment and unions, but about the outcomes of kids and not only what's going on with them right now, but what's gonna to happen to them when they're in their 20s and 30s and adults trying to live happy and productive lives. But I said I'm kind of a recovering educrat because one of the things is that as I've gone on and I've met a lot of people who have these ideas about innovation and education, you know, there's a dark side of that for me, having been on the other side, and I find myself shaking my head and giving tough love to a lot of you idealist people out there. So it's great for people who want to make change. And people who develop these programs and they're using their lean startup and the minimal viable product and they've done their testing with their students and their teachers. But those people don't have buying power. In fact, some schools don't even have buying power. Education in this country is a business. It brings in trillions of dollars. And right now, what happens in change on the status quo very ha happens when there's significant influence and in money on the line. In fact, the most powerful men in education, Joel Klein, anyone, calls himself a disruptor. So what does ma that make all of us? <laughs> and the truth is that not a lot of change can happen when we work with people one-on-one -on -one and when we work for free. So what can we do about it? So I talked a little bit about the denial, those of you who are in denial. And I, again, I, I worked in one of these institutions and was in denial when I first started. And then we have another group, um, sort of the people who create an epic battle about this. So we have these evil district offices and government agencies and institutions. So I'm just gonna tolerate them or dismiss them, or I'm gonna fight them to the death until I launch my program and change everything. But we've been doing that for 30 years, and those changes end up being incremental for our students. Maybe there's a different way. Maybe there's a way to partner BFFs 
with the people who already are working, working in the education system and to be able to make the change that we think that students and teachers need. One of the things that's great about 140 Edu is that this is a place to talk about questions and ideas and not just solutions. And I will completely admit that I co-opted that from someone's tweet yesterday. So whoever tweeted that, thank you. I did retweet you. Um, so what I've tried to do is come up with a few, really just two simple questions for those of us who are trying to innovate and change and be entrepreneurs on the outside or the inside. Questions that we should really think about as we try to make change. And the first one is, what does it mean for those of us who are teachers and are working on a small scale, whether it's in a classroom or with individual clients or with individual students, what does it mean to be sustainable? Can we be challenged from the very beginning when we have an idea, whether it's an app for teachers or a game for students, to think with vision? You know, I know the Lean Startup is a very big thing in the ed tech industry or in, in upcoming entrepreneurs. And this doesn't go against the lean startup model because we're not talking about implementation. Unless you have all the money in the world, you can't launch big and you can't replicate right away. But what about thinking right away what that might look like? And thinking about the buyers, if you're a revenue generating program, what does that look like from the beginning? Again, Many, many of you are teachers who work with smaller groups of students, but going back to the slide that we started with, how can what we do, the ideas that we've, we've talked about these last few days, if we thought about scale, what impact could that have on our country and for our students? And you thought I was kidding about the BFF thing, but I'm not. <laughs> with social media, which is a big um, part of why we're all here today, you can connect with these institutions these days. Government and these agencies are much smaller and much more accessible. They want to hear from, from our community. Whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn, and let me give you a hint from being on the other side, because I get a lot of inquiries via email of people who want to do something in the schools. Look at for your middle managers on LinkedIn. Those are the people who pay the bills and keep the trains running and, and love to talk to people who have great ideas. And Twitter, we're all here, we're big on Twitter. Um, DC Public Schools, LA Unified, they spend a lot of resources all day tweeting and engaging, not just their latest PR release, communities of people who care about education in these communities, um, solving problems, etc. LA, actually, there was a lot of um, press about the fact that they hired their first full-time community manager. Um, so again, engage with these institutions. This slide is a client of my company, Newark Public Schools in New Jersey, Teach Newark. And for those of you who are on EdChat, you've probably seen us there. We're frequent contributors. Because it's our vision that together, with our resources and with your great ideas, and as a community, we can create a community of talented educators who can help our students, and in particular, Newark. So if you are an EdChatter, please say hi to Sarah, our community manager, next week. <clears throat> and really, it's a very small, short presentation, but I'm hoping that for those of you who are innovating in your classroom or have these ideas that you want to launch externally, to think a little bit differently. Think about scale from the start. Think about sustainability. Think about how your, pro your solution can launch, launch something big for many, many, many students. Again, my name is Tracy Brisson. I'm the founder of the Opportunities Project, and I would love to continue this conversation online, in person today, um, especially about how we can do well, live well, and help the future outcomes for all of our students. Thank you.